Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna be taking an evidence-based approach to increasing immune function. So let's dive right in. Hey guys, my name is Zach Allison and welcome to Nutrition Library, your trusted resource for an evidence-based approach to supplementation. If you haven't already or you are new to the channel, uh, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button that's below this video so that you can stay up to date with all of our future content. Thank you so much. So I was really holding off on making a video like this. Um, the last thing that I want to do is try and drive traffic to my channel simply uh, by taking advantage of people's fears. However, over the last few weeks, it has become abundantly clear that I need to make a video like this for a couple of reasons. And one is that I have been getting bombarded by supplement companies in my news feed on Facebook and Instagram and in my email trying to sell me immune boosting supplements that simply do not work. And so to be quite frank is kind of pissing me off a little bit to see companies that are out there that are trying to take advantage of people's fear and capitalize on that for financial gain. Now, the second reason is because I've been going to the grocery store a lot lately, trying to stock up on food supplies. And when I head over to the supplement aisle, one thing that I notice is that all of the supplements that don't work in increasing immune function are completely sold out. And then all of the supplements that actually are effective at improving immune function are fully stocked. And this has given me the impression that there is a broad misunderstanding on how the immune system functions and things that you can and can't take in order to augment immune function. And so I figured that I would go ahead and compile pretty much a comprehensive list of all of the known immune augmenters that we have seen improve immune function and disease states in clinical trials so that you guys can actually make informed decisions on which supplements you should and should not be buying right now. And so for the sake of this video, I'm going to be exclusively talking about supplemental options that you can be implementing into your life in order to improve immune system and increase the possibility of warding off the coronavirus and the subsequent infection of COVID-19. Now, I will say that most of the supplements that are on the list today are immunostimulants, and there is some speculation right now that the later stages of the disease state COVID-19 actually rely upon an overstimulation of the immune system to actually attack some of the organs. And so I will say that it would be highly prudent to cease any supplementation if you are to get a positive test result. These are simply methods to help reduce the likelihood of contracting the illness as well as methods to lessen the severity and duration of the disease. Now, I will also say that almost all of the supplements that we will be talking about today have been performed on things like the rhinovirus, which is the common cold, as well as influenza, which is the flu. And so there isn't any obviously direct research on things and compounds and methods as of right now that can help prevent the contraction of COVID-19. However, there is a lot of decent research out there right now on ways to ward off viral infections. And so again, all of this video will be focusing on ways to generally decrease the likelihood of viral infection. So the first supplement on our list today and is by far the most potent antiviral on the list, and that is garlic. And so according to this study right here, 
supplemental garlic, whether that be in whole clove form or as an aged garlic extract, had the ability to reduce the frequency of contracting the rhinovirus over the course of a cold season by between 60 and 70 percent. Now this is extremely significant for a couple of different reasons. The first of which being that nothing else even comes close to competing with garlic when it comes to its antiviral activity. And the second is that garlic studies have been fairly consistent in showing their ability to ward off the common cold as well as influenza. Now the importance of garlic here is that it's one of the only supplements on our list that has a extremely consistent ability to actually ward off sickness. Most of the supplements on our list have somewhat of a capacity to ward off sickness, but are more so used to treat illness and to reduce the amount of time that you are sick and the severity of symptoms. Whereas garlic has the semi-exclusive ability to actually decrease the likelihood of getting sick in the first place. Now, in this study right here, garlic also had the ability to reduce the severity of symptoms as well as the length of sickness if taken before the onset of sickness. And so garlic supplementation honestly is kind of the first line of defense when it comes to supplemental methods of improving immune function and warding off disease. Now the second herb on our list today is an herb known as echinacea. Now echinacea has by far the most research on it when it comes to warding off disease, shortening the duration of sickness, as well as lessening the symptoms. However, the reason it is number two is because there are a couple of different conflicting studies showing that it did not have a significant effect on illness. However, there was a recent meta-analysis that was performed on all of the studies that were performed on echinacea at the time that did find that it had the ability to reduce the frequency of illness by 58% as well as reduce the duration of illness as well as the severity of symptoms. Now whereas garlic is an outright immunostimulant meaning that it increases the function of T cells, natural killer cells, as well as other immunity markers, echinacea is actually a little bit different in that it activates antigen count as well as activating, interestingly enough, the CB2 receptors on immune cells. And so in my opinion, garlic and echinacea together taken before illness have an extremely potent and kind of one-two combo effect when it comes to preventing illness. But now I do want to go ahead and note again that it would be extremely prudent to cease intake of any herbal supplementation once an illness sets in simply because specifically with COVID-19, we do not know exactly how it's affecting the immune system and how it's causing its mortality rate. Uh, a lot of the reports that I've been looking at lately have been showing that a lot of the deaths that have been caused by COVID-19 are caused by cardiac arrest and not decreased lung function like was previously thought. And so the last thing that you want to do is to increase immune function during the latter stages of that disease, especially if increased immune function is actually causing mortality later on in the disease state. Now, another thing I wanna point out here is one thing that you will notice here is that I did not put elderberry on the list. And the reason is, is there just isn't any good research for the effectiveness of elderberry. I know it is an extremely popular supplement right now. However, there's only a handful of clinical trials on elderberry and all of those have been fairly consistent in reporting that elderberry 
can help to shorten the length and severity of an illness, but only if taken at the first sign of illness. And so it seems that it does not have an effect on preventing illness, but rather helping someone get over illness. But like I just stated, something like this is the last thing you want to take if you actually are to contract COVID-19. Now, another handful of things that you're gonna want to avoid supplementing with during this time is probably gonna be things like fish oil, curcumin, and NSAIDs, simply because they are all to some degree and with varying evidence immunosuppressants because of their effects on inflammation. Now, I talked about this in my previous video on zinc. However, a lot of folks do not realize that immunity and inflammation are highly intertwined. And so when you suppress inflammation, you're also to some degree and to some effect also suppressing immune function. And that's the last thing you want to do, especially if you are intentionally trying to ward off illness. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about very briefly are some of the micronutrients that might be relevant here. And the first one I wanna talk about is vitamin C. Now, vitamin C is the most popular immune booster out there right now. However, there is no clinical research to imply that it can actually prevent the onset of illness. Now, there is a little bit of research stating that if you, for instance, are an athlete, that taking and supplementing with vitamin C can help prevent the onset of illness by the tune of roughly 50%, but that has only been shown in high-performance athletes, whereas in the general public, vitamin C supplementation will not prevent, and I want to say that again, will not prevent the onset of illness. It may, to some degree, help with symptoms and the length of illness once it comes on, but again, it won't do you any help to take vitamin C immediately when you start recognizing symptoms symptoms. You would have to take vitamin C before the onset of illness, and even then, it will not prevent it, but simply shorten the amount of time that you have the illness. Now, another micronutrient that has been shown to reduce either the severity, frequency, or duration of illness is zinc. And now, zinc is another popular immunity supplement However, it has only been shown to be effective at preventing illness and helping to prevent illness in the elderly. Similarly to vitamin E, which has also only been shown to help prevent illness in the elderly. However, because the coronavirus is specifically taking such a big toll on the elderly population. If you are above the age of 50, I would highly recommend looking into supplementing with zinc and vitamin E. Now, the last micronutrient that I wanna talk about is actually the most important micronutrient and has the most evidence behind it in preventing illness, and that is vitamin D. Now, in this study right here, vitamin D supplementation had the ability to reduce the frequency of influenza in children by 40%. And in this study, women who were taking vitamin D at various amounts were three to 26 times less likely to contract influenza than those who weren't. And so when it comes to micronutrient intake, vitamin D is hands down the most important micronutrient to be taking in order to prevent prevent illness. And then if you are someone who is highly active and somewhat of an athlete, I would also recommend looking into vitamin C supplementation. And then if you do fit into that elderly category, I would also look into supplementing with vitamin E and zinc. And now I can't say this enough, especially while you are developing your personal stack for immune health and immune function, that if you are to come down with some type of symptom to immediately cease 
supplementation simply because we just do not know the effects of either suppressing or increasing immune function during the disease state of COVID-19. But when building your stack, I would start with vitamin D, garlic, and echinacea. And then again, depending on the specific population that you fit into, also look at adding in zinc, vitamin E, and vitamin C. But other than that, guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope this was helpful in helping you to kind of cut through some of the crap that's out there on the internet and some of the marketing, just garbage marketing that's out there trying to sell you supplements that simply do not work. If you have any questions that are relevant to this in particular, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I read all those comments and respond to every single one of them. And so again, if you have a comment, leave it down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But other than that, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.